Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Techno Analysis Trading Plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. Before we pull up our video, we always want to start off our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be referred as a trading recommendation. No matter what foreign investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can't lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only, future results not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility, trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our forced technical analysis trading plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. In each video, we look at the prior session's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll review the gold chart to come up with leading sentiment. We'll try to create a low volatility and inside bar watch list, and we have an education spotlight at the end. Please send your feedback and comments to contact at dmbfx.com, and let's head to the charts. As usual, we are starting off with the gold chart. Ooh la la, just look at that beautiful uptrend. It just doesn't get any better than that, does it? And so what we're basically seeing is the, the market consolidating and breathing after seeing that. As we come over to our market profile, we can see that the market really stayed in a range today after this beautiful upturn. Now what we can see in a market profile uh, is that if we get below uh, the 1651 price level, you can see how much light volume is there until we get back down here to the 1625 so there's about a 30 to 20 dollar range here if we get below it because there's no volume to stop us it's sort of like volume can be resistance and support you can see the volume accumulating here and being resistance the sellers are saying hold on well there's two things sellers and also uh, anybody who was in this run up you know they're getting out and there are people buying here thinking it's going to keep going up but they're buying these guys profit you know they bought wholesale uh, people up here bought retail um, so as these people are taking the profits what we need is for them to get back in where would they get back in well they'll probably get back in down here <laughs> because again what buyers are going to come in to close this volume so I will let our, our RSI get back down here to oversold uh, but again I want to watch as we break 1650 we might come all the way back down to 1620-ish. So gold continues to be strong, although it was a sideways day. So how does that affect our dollar pairs? Well, we can see that the dollar, in essence, was weak. But more importantly, the pound was stronger. So let's take a look. Here we are on a pound daily chart. And we can see we talked about this possible resist support of the 20 to 50 million average. We got that. And we came right back up to our uh, previously identified resistance price level. So what's going to happen here? Well, first of all, keep in mind, even though I identified this as a potential price level, we can see the wicks here. So there's a lot of wicks here. Stellar's still trying to keep us from um, going higher. So even if we break above, I still want to see if we can, if the sellers are going to push us back down into this larger range. Um, our selling volume is still on top so you can see how far lagging behind our buying volume is now when we come over to our one hour profile we can see we're above our long term moving average and we are in a selling Bollinger Band zone so that's uh, that kind of correlates with what we're saying we're at a resistance point we're above the long term moving average and we're in a sell zone and we can see that the pound took control today and therefore we had the big move up but as they start to run parallel and even the pound coming down and the dollar coming up we might see uh, this start to to come back down as we thought so but again in order to get that uh, we need uh, the pound to come back to its long-term moving average and we need the dollar to rise above how about the euro dollar The euro dollar, a little bit of the same thing, except for you can see the euro dollar is not even at the resistance and getting into new air. It's really in the middle of all of this congestion. It's really in the middle of all of this. Same thing about the selling and buying volume, but again, really in the middle of this congestion. I personally prefer to stay out of that. 
Um, you know, because you just don't know if this is going to be one of these whippy days or you're going to get all the way up here. Um, here we can see after we made our move up, now we're in the neutral zone and we're just above our long-term moving average. Another reason to sit on our hands. But clearly the euro is in control um, and uh, heading higher and look at it moving up here even as the dollar is doing the same. So we've got the pound in the control, we've got the euro in control and we're seeing uh, two things. The pound at resistance, the, the euro uh, dollar in the middle of a congestion area. Finally, we'll finish off with the dollar franc. And here, even though we're not seeing the franc give up control, we can see that it's heading down. And as it's heading down, that's allowing for on our daily us to get a retracement. I mean, clearly, we're oversold. I mean, we're way off from a moving average. We're way off from our last, what we could identify as our last support price level. So uh, we have to make sure that we uh, allow this to breathe in and kind of ret return back to parity. We can see that we are still in our, uh, a buying zone and we're well below our long-term moving average. So there's, there is evidence for us to go higher, but what we really need to get a real move back to a moving average is for the dollar to take control. As we come to our watch list, first up we have our low volatility watch list. Again, this is our H1 one hour time frame with the Bollinger Bands. And currently we're going to be watching the Aussie dollar and the dollar franc. We currently do not have anything for our inside bar watch list. As we continue to use the intelligent investor as our basis for our education spotlight, uh, in the very beginning of the book they're also talking about what exactly does it take to be an intelligent investor. And one of the things he says is there's proof that high IQ and higher education are not the you know end all be all for being an intelligent investor. So, um, and in the book they talk about there was this big hedge fund that had these mathematicians, these MBAs, these computers, and that they spent um, uh, money believing that the bond market was going to return, and they end up losing about two billion dollars. So that's simply to say that, yes, it's good to have a strategy and a system, but you still have to have, A, common sense, and B, control of your emotions to, uh, in order to enact that system properly. Remember, trading is not being about right and wrong. Trading is about letting the probabilities work in your favor and let your wins outweigh your losses. You know you can find our videos on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We have our great free uh, five video course where you can learn how to develop your own high probability training setups, which will give you a gauge into our teaching style. And so if you sign up for our mentor sessions one at a time or as a group package, you can see how we can help you one-on-one -on -one develop a personalized trading plan. Uh, cash back for Forex, you might as well get paid to trade. It's rebates, it doesn't affect the trading conditions or your um, your spread and finally if you want signals for Forex we can provide that for you a bunch of different providers you can sign up for the one that matches your specific trading style and you can let it be automatically trade or you can trade it yourself as we said it's not about the system it's not about education it's not about computers it's about having the psychological capital to follow a system and having the common sense knowing when to not follow the system Remember we talked about that high probability, high probability trading is about understanding the playing field and that's what computers miss out on and that's what the human interaction with the market can bring. Thanks guys and I'll see you next time.